Hello and welcome. I'm Julia Woning and today I'm going to show you how you can create these beautiful magnolias with pen pastels on pastel mat paper. But how do we start? Of course, if I take just some plain drawing paper and a charcoal or a pencil and you can find like forms that you can relate to the subject lines in the direction of the subject then you can draw it by hand but not everybody is so confident with the right forms but you just want to create a nice pen pastel drawing then I will suggest that you take the first lines by transferring the photograph and how do you do that Let this one aside take a copy of your photo in the format that you want to draw your painting or drawing this is the pastel paper the pen pastel paper where i want to create these magnolias on and how do we transfer it by creating a transfer from your let me see which color i have a sponge and i will take a little bit of pink and put it on the back of your copy pen pastel is a very good material to make your transfers with you have a lot of colors that you can use what you can see here is approximately my palette that i will use today that's my basic palette that's pen pastel starter kit by julia woning with the white the blender the yellow the magenta the reds the cyan blue uh, sorry yeah cyan blue turquoise blue ultramarine blue black and some additional colors and then you can create this with me or any other magnolia I think this will be enough. Take your pastel mop paper, put your transfer with your copy on top of it. And now I'm using a, let me see if we can find it. Yes, a embossing pen. It's a pen with a little knot on it. And I'm already all covered with pen pastel. That's <laughs> regular with me. So let's dive into it um be aware that you don't push too hard on your pen or on your embossing pen because then it will give marks on your paper and that's not what you want you just want to transfer some light lines of your subject and of course i can hear you that's not drawing that's transferring yes that's the first layer and after that you still need to watch what you want to paint or draw because this will help you to put it on the right spot okay like this But if you are confident, you can draw it by hand, of course. But this is much quicker. And you will start on the right place with all your colors. Like this. Very light hand. And I'm not sure if I am too light handed or not. But let me see what I have done here and here and just a little bit where those color spots are and 
and there you can see your line is already there on your pasta mat paper. For me, this is enough. I have a very slight sketch on my pasta mat paper, my original, my colors, and my soft tool, several one, because I will use several tools for the different color ranges. And um, let's dive in. Pastel pencil. I like to work with the Derwent Pastels pencils. And for now, I'm going to draw again my subject on my pastel map paper. So again, I'm looking at my photo and put down those lines just to get acquainted with my subject. And again, what I see is here is very white. So I want to take the white pencil. And of course there's no point on it. So I will be using a, like this. This is how I, Get my points and this is already enough and with just white I will apply those lines on top of here because the pink would be too dark so get those lines in with several colors like this And again here. Some of my drawing didn't transfer, but that's no problem. I can draw it. It's like this. Then again with pink. With a light hand. And I see there are some depths in here, like this. Some wrinkles in the flower. Put it in there where the pink ends and where the white starts. This is green. This will be pink. Again, just look at your photograph and try to captivate those areas where you think you need to have those lines. Again here. Here, here, maybe with white, because those bokeh effects I want to apply later, just to get again like this, the light areas here. So you can see how I start with this kind of drawings. Now I want to have a green one. Let me see. Um, not too green. Just a little bit in between green and some dark olive color. Very light. Just put the lines here. Why am I doing this is that because when you're working with your pen pastels, those lines will disappear. And then it's difficult to find those lines. So that's why I'm putting down extra lines with my pastel pencils just to get acquainted with my subject. And again, looking at my photograph, looking at the subject, and then it helps you to get familiar with the subject. Something like this. Okay, this is out of focus. I'm guessing all the lines that I want are in here. Like this. And let's dive in. Normally, I would start at the end. So at the background. But for now, I will start at one flower or two. And then later on, I go to the background just to get you acquainted with those pink flowers. Okay. Some soft tools. 
I get this one, maybe two of those, but we will see. Let's start. If I see this, I see several colors. I see white and I see pink. So I have several pinks, white and a blender. If I want to apply pressure on my pastel mop paper with my sponge without any or with less pen pastel, your sponge will deteriorate. So you have to have a certain amount of pen pastel on your tool and on your paper to get those mo uh, colors mixed on paper. So for the start, I will take some blender and some white and apply it there where I can see that it's the most white because lighter than white we can't have on this subject so i will apply some white in here and that will be my lightest color maybe some blender like this and again on this side a lot of white. We will have to put those colors next to each other instead of on top of each other. That's the main difference of working with pen pastel on pastel mod paper and the main difference between pen pastels and pastels, uh, the classical ones, the, the pastel sticks. So pen pastel, you have to work those colors next to each other because they always will be blending with each other. For white, I will just apply it in here. And of course, in this big area, it's just white. And you see, I apply the pen pastel in a small area. And then when I have applied on the larger areas, then I can rub it in. But for the first, you have to apply it in small areas like this. And again here, and again here. Those are my white, of course, here underneath, it's also, but then I will go uh, with my hand on top of the work. So I don't want to do that. And of course I'm going over the line and that's no problem. I can correct that later, but for now it's like this. Let's try to create a light color, just a little pink and apply it in here with some white and some blender and blend it with a very light hand on my paper. Again, a little bit darker. Ooh, that's too much. Just take a little bit more of the light pink and try to blend it like this. Maybe a little bit white and you can mix it all together like this. Again, not too much pressure and not a large area. So bit by bit and maybe a little bit blender. You can see it's like a little touch. I'm not creating dust to create color on my tools, but I'm very careful by creating those colors on my tools like this. even a little bit of red just a little bit and now i have too much what you can do is take some tissue paper like this wipe it off and then mix it all together like this then again on the other side just a little pink little blender and pink more white because there is already pink in my tool i can rub the pink with the white on my paper so i already mixing those colors on my paper just like this apply it and now a little bit of pink 
again. Maybe a little bit of red. Just put it down like this, rub it off and then mix it. So you have more control in mixing those colors on your paper. I can go to the dark area, but the same color changes that I put in here, I can put in those outer leaves. So I will go and transfer it over there. And what I see, it's not white, it's more like a light bluish. And therefore I will take another color because uh, another uh, soft tool, because I want to apply some blue in here with blender and white and mix it all up. So this is not the white one, there is a blue shimmer. And I have to be careful because there is yellow paper and yellow paper with a very light blue color will get greenish and I don't want to have any green in those flower leaves of the magnolia. So like this and I can apply it also in here on this side. Just a little bit blue with white. Again, a little bit blender to blend it all. Uh, when do you need a blender? Um, you need a blender if it's sticky or if there is, um, you, you feel that you have to make more pressure with your tool on your drawing, then it's time to get some blender or more pen pastels. You need a certain amount of pen pastels between your tools and your paper, so your tools will not deteriorate. And that's difficult. You have to learn how much is too much or how less is too less. So yeah, it's, it's get acquainted, but the main thing is that you need a very light touch. Something like this and this. Now I switch again to my pink tool and I will create some dark colors in here. And maybe in combination with red to get that special color of pink. Like this. And apply it. and when I feel that I need to too much pressure then I will take some blending some colorless blender that helps me to create the color that I want to create on this flower leaf some white and blend it all together These are the first layers of pan pastels, like this, again with just white, building it up, like this. Yeah, ne next leaf like here, more blender, blend it all together. Do you see how much I'm taking? I'm not creating any dust. To get those colors on the paper. And then I can Go on top of the blue, get a light of purple with a light hand and creating all those different values in those pink colors. Sorry if my English is not 
completely correct, but I'm trying. I'm not a native speaker. I'm from Holland, the Netherlands in Europe, but I like to educate or especially inspire people with my work. And in this group, the pen pestle by beginners for beginners on Facebook, I like to share this project. So if you are a beginner and you have Facebook, then Pen Pestle by Beginners for Beginners will be a group for you. You can share your work with step-by-step -step photos. You can even ask all your Pen Pestle questions in that Facebook group. We have a very nice community over there. Like this. Apply those colors. Again, I will switch to the blue one, get some blue, and I want to apply the blue again in that leaf to get a light purple shade in my leaf. Again, on this side, just apply a little bit like ta 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 ta. Clean it on your tissue paper and then rub it in because otherwise it was too much and now you have more control on that color tone. Again white in here and you get like a shimmer in that leaf. Again a little bit in here. The purple shine is nice in that leaf. If it's too much, turn your tool around and with a clean tool you can mix it all up. Like this. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to the darker color. I'm using a blender, the purple magenta and some red and apply it on here like this with the blender so it's much easier to apply now you can see why I created those lines so I have the area where I can work on like this so I can see where those lines are that helps me by creating this flower Something like this. Again, and maybe a little bit purple. Just a little hint of purple in here and in here and in here. Just to get a darker value of your pink. Something like that. Again in here. Mix it in here. And some red down there. Don't create the color that you think how the magnolia is. Create the color that you can see. And in my picture I see here a warm, even an orange color as a shimmer. I'm guessing of the green, so apply that orange then. Clean your tool, take some white and apply a little bit of white, thin, pink color like this. The bright magenta color you can't create with the colors that you have on your uh, pan pastel, but I'm using all those pink colors that I have to my ability. Uh, is it an ability? No, but you know what I mean. These are the pink colors that there are existing in the pan pastel sets. So let me try this. 
like this. For now, I think that's nice. Now I want to create some green. Of course, I can create this one, but I want to create first one nice magnolia. Just a little bit of green, maybe some white, and apply it on here. A little bit of blender. And of course, against that pink. And the, the furry hairs that you can see over there, I will create with the pastel pencil. So I'm laying down that basic color, not too light, not too dark, in-betweens. And apply those colors. Much more, more yellowish. So I'm using a little ochre, I'm little nice green color. In the comments down below you can find the colors that I'm using. Like this. Maybe some more white in here, just a little bit. Okay, again in here, maybe a little bit brown, like it's darker. And here again, just a light touch. You don't need too much when you're coloring in those first layers. Nice thing is that you can blend all those colors immediately. Like this. And of course you have to have a knowledge about color mixing theory. It's very important that you know how you can create your colors with any kind of medium, even with the pen pastels, you need to have knowledge about the basic mixing, how you can create those colors. Green, ochre, white. Now I want to have a brighter, so I'm taking some yellow and white on my tool and to create this very nice green color. Very light rubbing in the paper. And of course I see some yellowish underneath like here and here. Maybe a shimmer there. And now I will take another one, another tool, another soft tool like this one. And it has already a darkened color on my soft tool, but that's no problem. I'm just taking some brown, maybe this brown too, and apply it on here to get that branch with the brown color. Like so. That's the first layer. Now I'm using a little bit purple and brown all together to create a darker tone. So I'm creating that purple and the brown has a dark value in that branch, like this. Again, switch my tool to the green one and apply it like here. Again, switch those colors with each other. 
and again some light color in here something like this oh okay now you get the hang of it how those colors will uh, work to each other so I'm gonna try to create these colors again again with the soft tools with the pink I apply the pink tone in here be aware where the white is that you don't get any color on it because it's difficult to come back to the white that's why we started with the white you have to apply those colors next to each other like this apply it with light touch maybe some dabbing like here and a red tone I see a red tone in here so I'm using the red maybe even a little bit of yellow in here and then again pink on the outside just to build those colors up I now have enough color in here so before I try to captivate that line I bring that color somewhere else where I can use it before I can rub it off on my tissue paper because now I'm using that color as an underlayer or maybe even in here just to clean my brush like this then I will take some white and I will apply it in here and mix it so you can see you can clean your tool or you can clean it for you on your paper where you think you will need that color so it's up to you what you want to do maybe a little bit red to get those contrast in here yeah light pink now it's too dark so I have to clean it take the light pink you hear that I sometimes blow a little bit of dust away but it's still very less dust in um, comparison than when you work with the classical pastel it's less dust and you're working with very minimum of colors you don't need to have enough you, you know what I mean it's it's very like this so okay that's the pink then the pink comes up in here just a little bit darken in here I always work with my pen pastels for let's say 90% of the total project and then I will switch to my pastel pencils if you want to do this earlier that's all up to you it doesn't matter it's not good or bad it's just different there are different ways to tackle this project or to create this project on your pastel mod paper even if you want to try it on ordinary pastel paper um, it will have a different outcome but you can try it be aware that the pastel mod is much easier to build up those layers than when you do this on traditional pastel paper but everything is possible just try it and to feel the uh, yeah, get the experience of how different pastel paper works for you with pen pastels I think that's the best advice I can give you like this so don't rub it in the whole surface apply first all those little tiny layers and then you can mix it all together yeah then I get the red in here and now I can apply the red with the pink 
again I will switch and I want to switch not to the green but I would prefer to the blue so I will turn around my sponge put it in here and pull it away on the outside and like a sock you can apply, apply the cover on your soft tools like this again a little bit of light blue and rub it in here with uh, some blender and first I want to apply the blue in the area of the yellow paper and now I want to blend it to get a soft focus line between the blue white and the pink that's how you create soft lines if you blend it all together like this then you get an off focus blending or value of those two colors like this and again now you see why I apply the white at first because I know where the white is going and I want to know be sure that it will be white like this maybe a little mixing up, up here like this I want to switch back to my green again and I'm going in here with some blending sorry colorless blender and put those first layers on the paper like this apply it on here Put it against the red where can I see that color again like this is white this is white again here and here so I'm looking for that color green where I can apply it again like here and maybe a little bit here like this and you can almost hear it when I'm using too less pen pestle and rub too hard on the paper that's when you know there has to be more pen pestle or a lighter touch now I'm going with the green to the yellow, take my white, a lot of white because I want to create those light yellow areas like here and here. So this is a white with an undertone of yellow and that's why the paper is so nice because that helps now. Just, oh, there was some pink in it, but it, it's okay. <sighs> maybe some more yellow that will help and some white here I need some more yellow maybe more of the ochre yellow top of the white like this yeah now we're going to go to the brown tone in here And it's all looking at my reference photo where are those colors where can I apply those colors next to each other and that is that's why I created the first line with those pastel pencils so I know where I am going with my pen pastels little brown and green some blending some colorless blender to blend it all
maybe some white in here. And because of there is a darker color on my sponge, I will mix that white on my paper already. Turn around a little bit light yellow or maybe ochre with some white and some colorless blender. And for me, it, this is very satisfying and very uh, relaxing because I like to mix those colors because those color theories are in my head. I already know what I'm doing, so it looks very easy, but it's all by practicing and learning about color mixing. And uh, just enjoy creating. We all have to try it. We all start at some point. So just dive into the medium and um, enjoy it. Doesn't matter if it doesn't work immediately, but you get, yeah, you keep to, how do you call it in English? You know what I mean? You have to have persistence. You, you have to try it and try it and try it. And sometimes it goes well and sometimes it doesn't. But that's, that's no problem. We all have to learn in a way. So like this. Little green, little bit blue. And why I apply blue? If I apply blue in between those two colors, um, it's cold. And when something is cold, it goes to the back. And when it's warm, it comes in front of you. So if I apply a little bit of blue in between those colors, instead of a very dark color, um, it has the same effect, but it's much more nicer to see. I think that's the best way to explain it. Even with the green here, it's very dark, but I apply the blue color in here. So the green will come to you and the blue will go back like this. Maybe the blue I can apply again also in here. I go back to the green that I already lay down in here. Just a little bit of blue. That helps. See what a difference it makes? A little bit brown in here also, it was too blue. Something else. Switch my tool, get some pink in here. Here a little corner where there has to be more pink. Again here and here and here. Maybe some purple and pink in here because it's too light. Yeah, it has to be more pink purple. And of course the red, but maybe more brown red. I want to have a darker value here than it was. It has to be a shade of tone, something like this. Maybe a shimmer in the green. That's much better. Again in here. Yeah. I think I like it. Take a new one for the light blue. But before I do that, I want to apply my white. And this is white, and this is white. Apply it, because you can't get any whiter than white. Just apply the white where you can see white. Like this. In here, in here, a 
like this. Maybe a little bit more here. This is white, this is white. It's a bit more white in here. I'm guessing this is okay. Now I'm going back to this to apply again more white there where I can see it's white. Apply again. No, that's not white, that's a light color. This is white. This point is white. This is white. A little bit around here. This is white. Again here. Okay. Now I go to the blue, a little bit pink color. And again with the blender, light blue, light pink and create a lavender color. It's more bluish than lavender. It's more like a white shade color. Again, like this. Um, I see that color also in here, but more with pink. This. Like this. Hmm. Where do I start? I'm guessing I will start here by applying the pink color. Again. And there is some blue with pink in here. Like this. Much more white in here. Just to create that certain purple that you can see in this. Like here. You can see I apply it in small areas. Don't apply it again all over, but just in small areas. And when you're finished, then can, you can blend it all together with a purple or with a tone that you see. like this to create that form it's more grayish purple so i want to apply some dark purple like this and it's it looks like weird but i'm using a little bit of brown just to damp the value of the purple see what happens how the value change like this. The same color I can create with red, magenta and brown and apply it here with just a little blending. The colorless blender like this pink to create a very nice color I think. Here I apply more red, maybe more brown, here again more pink, and here maybe a little bit blue and purple. I know I'm going quick, but these are tone values and color mixing all together, and just see how I do it. Rewind, watch it again, and try it yourself to create those colors. Like 
this. The same color I'm seeing over here. Maybe a little pink like this. I see it with a little bit of purple in here. More pink underneath here. Is it still in the camera? Let me see if it's still in the camera. Yeah, it's still in the camera. Okay. Put it in here. Sometime I have to check it if the camera is still getting it all the information that I apply on my artwork or my paper. So I have to check it like this. Purple and pink. Not too much white. Just blend it all in. And again, that blue, the blue shade in here. Like this. Mix it all up. Like this. And that. So. Mm -mm -mm. Pink underneath here with white. Blend it all up like this. Maybe the other way around so there is less blue in it. What do I say? Less blue. <laughs> Put blue on the same spot that I want, didn't want it. Yep, there is some blue in it, but okay. Just to get it a little bit in here. Other tool. A little bit of yellow with white. Just a shimmer. Just a bit of shimmer of yellow in here. Like this, more white in here. Again, a pink one. Apply the pink there where you see pink. Apply the white and mix it all together with the blender. Like this. Those first layers of pampas tolls. Okay. <laughs> then I find my green one and again apply the green colors. In my drawing, I see a lot of green here, so a lot of green I apply down on here. I see a lot more colors, but let's move this a little bit up. Apply some green and some blending. Like this. So the basic greens are there and now I want to apply some lighter colors like here. And in here. And in here. And then I see some blue greenish color. So I apply those blues and greens and mix it all together. And you can see that the green is touching the purple and the red, so you have to blend it all with each other. Like this, and a little bit more here. Blending pink. Blending it with the green. Or maybe red. In here, in here, in here. Clean it all up. 
some blue. There is green. Green and blue gives a different blue than I'm using a clean tool with just blue. See, so I'm mixing with a dirty sponge and light blue to create this color. And that's experience. Which dirty tool creates that color? It's like this, mixing it all together, getting that blue in here, getting the pink and purple in here, maybe a little bit more purple. And mixing it all together without getting all those colors like a grayish color. So you have to be aware. It looks like I'm um, mixing all kinds of colors with each other and correct, that's it. But in a certain way and in a certain um, area, because otherwise it will get dull and grayish and not what you want. So it looks easy, <laughs> but I'm telling you it's not. But I will show you how I do that with those dirty tools to apply those shades everywhere where I want them. A little bit of pink again in here and in here. Now I go back to the white again. So I will create a tool for just white. And I want to blend those with each other so I get a soft focus of those white areas with the color. So I'm using a white. I will start in the white and I will go on top of it like this. Again, I go on top of it. So I will mix those colors with the white and I will blend the lines there where it's necessary. Sometimes I clean my soft tool, bring the white again. This is soft. Get that bokeh effect like this to mix it all together. Again on this side. this side and a little bit yellowish because this isn't white these are more like pink bokeh circles just like this with a little bit of white in it, like this. And again, apply some white on top of here, guessing here. For now, this is nice. Yep, bokeh effect on here. Now I will apply the blue colors in the background. And therefore I need several colors of blue and mainly those two and a little bit of that blue. So let's dive in. Apply a lot of blue in my soft tools without creating dust and apply it like this. Not larger, just like that. Apply it again. And again next to each other, building up a layer in the background, maybe already some turquoise with the light blue. Again here, and I'm guessing the light circle will be around here. So apply the white. Why not the white on top of the blue? There's some blue already in my sponge. 
um, you can't get any wider. So you have to build those colors next to each other. That's why I already apply a white color or similar white color and then go back to the background. Again, just the first layer because later on, and you will see what happens, take the blender and now I can blend it all together. Now I can go over it with my sponge on the pump pastel on the pastel mat paper. If I didn't apply that first layer, it's difficult and your sponge will deteriorate. So you have to apply that first layer step by step on your pastel mod paper. Again here it's more lightened than blue so I have to apply the white in here. Maybe a little bit yellow. Oh, sorry, pink. It's not yellow, it's pink on yellow paper. Again, the blue. Maybe a little turquoise. Again, apply it like this. With a light hand, steady but light hand, first layers, again in here, building it up. Like this. Again in here. Apply that blue bit by bit. Even a darker color you can apply on here. That first layer. And of course, most people are doing like this, and then your sponge will deteriorate. So, no larger areas than the length or the square of your soft tool. I'm guessing that's the most important size. So like this size, this size is nice, this square. And build it up. First that, first lay down with those kind of areas like this, like this, again. And be aware that you don't create those squares. You don't want to see those squares, but those are the first layers. Again, against the magnolia, you don't want to see any yellowish of the paper. Like this. You have done, I have now done a already large area. I'm just taking the co colorless blender and I'm all blending it out, but I see vertical lines. So that helps me. I can make, create vertical lines. Like this. Now I can go over it on a larger area without deteriorating my sponge. And you 
you can soften it. You can soften it now. Like this. You can blend it all out. Because there is enough pen pastel on your pastel mod paper to do so. Like this. Around the flower. Like this. Before I do any um, extra tints or create extra tones, I will apply again all over the background that light blue color. Maybe more turquoise down here. Again, those colors, mixing it all together. Like this, again, a little bit higher so I can apply the color right around the area of the leaf. Like this. Again, laying the first layer of the background. And yes, it's nice to have more soft tools to create those projects because you will have several soft tools for different color families like a pink or a blue or a green or a brown. There are people who are working with uh, makeup sponges. I can understand that because they're cheaper, but they are made from a different material. You will create just more dust than it's necessary. So your pan pastel are, yeah, it costs you more pen pastel than sponges. So if you learn how you can use your sponges the right way, the soft tools, then it's not necessary to buy the fake offs <laughs> because these sponges are created especially for the pen pastels in combination with the pen pastels because not every sponge is the same product or the same material or the same density of the material i'm guessing that's how you explain it but just get acquainted how you can work with those sponges of the soft tools and then you know what i mean i'm not using any brushes because brushes can hold down or hold up the pen pastel only when you create dust. And if you, yeah, I like the pen pastels because there are less dust than the ordinary classical pastels. So why do you want to create dust if it's not necessary? So, but there are several ways to roam, I'm always saying so. Just do what you prefer, but just try it to create these backgrounds with the tips that I'm giving, I'm giving that you have to apply those first layers next to each other with not too much space in between. And then you can blend it all together. Again here, I will take this one. It's much more turquoise. Like here. Okay, and here it's turquoise. Now I can go on top of it with that turquoise color. And there is a line in here. So I will create that line, that vertical line in the background, like 
here. And again in here. And a little bit blender, of course, to blend it all. Ooh, there's some green, but that's no problem. I can get rid of it. Be aware that if you touch your green or your pink in your blue, it will all mix. So be careful when you blend that background. Here you can see some yellowish through the layer because that's the color of the paper. And it all blends very well like this. Let's turn around my paper. Just blend in. And underneath it's more turquoise. So this color. Something like this. Now I'm using a little bit of ultramarine. And where is that line? That line is a little bit like here. I like the difference in colors in background. So that's why I creating that on the picture because I'm liking that. Because you are the artist, so you can also leave it if you don't like it or if it's too much. But I prefer to create it as well, just to get a little bit of a bokeh effect. Not as contrast as that, but just a little bit of a color. And of course those turquoise colors. Because the turquoise colors, so the turquoise colors, <laughs> is very nice with the pink. Okay, like this. Again, a little bit of ultramarine in here. Again, on top of here, but maybe I'm creating more as a bouquet effect. So I want to create more like a circle than a line like this. And maybe I will transfer it also in here. Same with the turquoise. I think I prefer that more than the vertical lines, but that's something that appears when you're busy creating and then you see something that you guess like this I like this what much more now I'm going to the white on top of here bokeh effect same here and I'm creating another one in here I think that's much nicer Again here, maybe idea like this. I guess it's giving it much more, yeah, much better than the vertical lines I'm guessing. So maybe a little bit more in here. Get rid of those lines. That one I can see like a bokeh effect. So a soft focus effect. I see a pink one in here, a little bit. Maybe I can apply a little bit one in here with white, just pink like this. Yeah. I like it. Maybe some small spots. Like 
that bokeh effect. Maybe a little bit more yellowish in here. I'm almost getting to the end of my pen pastels before I start with the pastel pencils. I want something clean. Who add something? Of course, I have not like this one. I want to apply white, 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 white. So real white, like this. Apply it here. Apply it here. This is white. This is white. I want to apply white here. That bokeh effect is nice. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Now I go and switch to my pastel pencils. And I will take away these pastel pencils, uh, sorry, pen pastels. And I will put down my pastel pencils and I have another box i have 70 cool 72 colors of the derwent pastels in here and let's get some details in those flowers where there is focus so the main focus is in this area and a little bit of in here maybe in here but let's dive in in here so let's start with the pink one this is a green one. I'm not guessing that I'm using that one. Oof. So let's dive in with the pink one. Just getting a little bit acquainted with the leaves, some details. darker color I'm using a P200 and a P170 this is the maroon color so a darker color to get more depth in the flower Just draw along very slightly. Something like this. Maybe in here too. Hmm. Pink. Sharp effect, soft effect, maybe some lines in this leaf. Hmm. 
the white, the 720. Hold down the paper, get some extra lines in here. Now I apply some hairs, some white hairs on the green and because of there is already green on it it will mix with white so it won't be white but a light color and you can apply it like that tick 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 those little hairs of the plant that fluffiness you can create like this. Those fluffiness is also a little bit in here. That's it. Line in here. And those little spots. And of course those white lines, not only pink, but also the white lines in the flower leaves. Here you see much more dots. So we create dots. Create what you see, not what you know. So if you see dots, create dots if you see a line you can apply a line it's all by looking good at your reference photo and I see here much more pink so I'll apply much more a pink color and a little bit of rubbing with my finger or with a soft tool just what you want, like this, rubbing it all in. Then again here, those little dots in pink, because this is focused and the other one is unfocused, so soft. And here we can see much more details in the leaves and of course again with the white. So create those little dots to get that structure of the flower leaf. This, this is a soft focus, soft focus, hard edge. Yeah, it's going somewhere. Now I'm going to the light blue and I apply. Oh, there was something on it that was not light blue. Maybe I can take this one and blend it a little bit. Yeah, that works nice. That's also. A very nice tool that you can use for small areas and you can use a clean sponge to be as a eraser something like this again a hard outline to create that sharp 
outline of those flower leaves with just blue. Okay. This is the P310, the P310, of the well, the powder blue. Hmm, or maybe here. It's like this. It's getting there, it's getting there. It's not finished, but it's getting there. Um, then Dioxy Purple, the P280. I'm using now to get a darker value in my flower, in the pink. Just to get more contrast in the flower. And when you get more contrast, when you get your dark darkener, your white will be wider, not wider, but whiter. So, um, you see what happens. I make it darker and your white will be lighter. So that's, sometimes I'm hearing uh, through my um, workshops, yeah, I can't get any wider. How are your values to your darkest color? Are your darkest color on the right spot? Is it dark enough? If that's not the way, then you have to darken your contrast and your light colors will be lighter. So it's a, always a um, balance between your light and your darker colors to create a nice value in light and dark. It's always a game between those two. And of course I can create also darker hairs. Maybe some in here too. And in here. And of course in the brown branch to get more form in here. That's one. Then I go here. Oh, that's too much. I'm using a clean one and I, I can blend it all in. I need the green one. Uh, the green one was the dark olive, the P510 I'm using in here. Just to get some more depth. Be aware, don't use too much. I will also use the dioxine purple in here. But be aware because this is a soft focus, so you don't need to have hard lines. Only in here. Blend it a little bit with your finger. The pen pastel is very difficult to blend with your finger, but your pastel pencils you can do with your finger. Just a little bit, just give it a little bit of a rub and you can rub it in like this to get the soft focus blending effect. That if that green here is darker, what I'm doing now with the purple on the green, the lighter colors next to the darker green will be lighter. Not because I made them lighter, because the green is getting darker. That's why. Yeah. Getting the pink. 
think in here. thinking I'm almost finished for me I'm finished you can go on and on and on I know you can do a lot more hours but I hope I give you some tips to get started and just try it yourself if it is this photograph but another photograph try it yourself to create a beautiful drawing with pen pastels and pastel pencils and lots of fun by creating these with your pen pastels and your pastel pencils hope you enjoy this video and um, maybe I see you or see your work at the Facebook page pen pastel by beginners for beginners so until the next time, bye.